Hello and welcome to Medical Dialogues. I am Dr. Nandita Mohan. August 1st has been declared as the World Lung Cancer Day every year. People all over the world commemorate this very unique day in an effort to prevent cases of lung cancer. Now, the goal of this day is to promote self-screening for lung cancer while also spreading as much information as you can about the disease. Lung Cancer Day, away, it raises awareness about this deadly disease, its prevention as well as its treatment. We all know that early detection definitely is vital for better outcomes. Now, for this, x-rays usually play a crucial role in lung cancer detection along with other imaging modalities, allowing the physicians to identify the abnormalities, tumors, or even nodules in the lungs. So the timely management or timely early detection is what is the mantra. So today I will be talking to you all about the role of x-rays in lung cancer detection. Along with x-rays, we will also be discussing about the various other imaging modalities. So on this note, I would like to introduce you all to Mr. Satyaki Banerjee, the Group Chief Operating Officer at Trivitron Healthcare. To brief you all a little about him, the formation of strategic alliances, regulatory affairs and intellectual property functions within the Trivitron Group became his responsibility after becoming the part of a leadership team in March 2015. Mr. Satyaki leads the international business and strategic alliances of the Trivitron Group with direct operations in the US, Europe, Middle East and Africa and distributor driven presence across APAC, CIS and LATLAM region. He also spearheads the new innovation initiatives in the field of advanced medical imaging and onco-radiology with a degree in science and postgraduate professional qualifications in information technology, business management, drug design and patents. Mr. Satyaki has been associated with the healthcare and pharmaceutical industry since 1997 with extensive experience of managing P&L, business operations, strategic alliances, research and even development. He has also served as the Vice President of International Business at Panakia Biotech before joining the Trivitron Group in 2015. We are welcome. We are very happy to have you on board here with us. Welcome to Medical Dialogues. Thank you, Dr. Nandita. And uh, it's a great pleasure being part of this show. Uh, since we are going to dedicate uh, the discussion on lung cancer, I would like to start with an earnest request for everyone who's watching this program. Uh, those of you who are still smoking, that's one thing that we need to stop. I would earnestly request everyone to quit smoking. That's the single most important thing that we can do to prevent lung cancer. And uh, with this, we can move into the more technical aspects of today's discussion. Great, sir. That's a great message to give it a start. Definitely smoking, as we all know, is the causative factor for lung cancer. So early, uh, if someone stops it, it's definitely going to be helpful for them. So coming to the technical aspect, as you mentioned, what according to you uh, are the x-rays or the various imaging modalities and what pivotal role they play in the early lung cancer detection as well as its diagnosis? As we all know that uh, the prevalence of lung cancer unfortunately, is one of the highest amongst all forms of cancers. And uh, we need to come up with effective uh, screening programs for early detection of lung cancer. And uh, when we're talking of early screening, uh, a basic chest x-ray can go a long way in having an early detection. Though an x-ray is not the most effective way of screening it, uh, there could be a chances that some small nodules, uh, some small tumors, May, might get missed up uh, in a, a simple chest x-ray, what we call radiography. But uh, it can be an early stage screening and that can be followed by a low dose CT, which is the gold standard for screening of uh, lung cancer. A low dose CT is able to very precisely and very clearly demarcate uh, the tumor, identify the size of the tumor, identify the precise location of the tumor, and which can be reviewed by a radiologist. And a confirmatory diagnosis of lung cancer can be done uh, by FNSC or a biopsy. All right. So, sir, definitely there is a hierarchy of the imaging techniques that one needs to go through coming to the final diagnosis of lung cancer. So, uh, 
how if i talk about these imaging techniques how have these advancements in the technology improved the precise lung cancer screening one of the advancement that we have been seeing in medical imaging over the past many years is the integration of artificial intelligence mm -hmm. now the medical images which are acquired by an x-ray a ct an ultrasound or mammography now, once we expose those X-rays uh, to an artificial uh, intelligence algorithm, now they enhance the diagnostic ability of a radiologist. Uh, tumors which are very small enough, which are barely visible on a standard X-ray, but those image enhancement uh, algorithms of AI, uh, which are assisted by deep learning tools, they would be able to do uh, a precise identification they can highlight those images and bring it to the attention of a radiologist so that uh, they can delve deeper and, and do a much more precise diagnosis using basic simple x-ray. At the same time, uh, CT scanners have become more affordable. They have become more advanced. And we also see a lot of enhanced software tools which are becoming an integrated part of uh, CT scanning. And these software tools can also go a long way in a very precise diagnosis of lung cancer. Great, sir. So, uh, sir, how, again, coming to these uh, the imaging modalities or the imaging techniques that we're talking about, they have been utilized. How are these being utilized for an effective lung cancer staging as well as the treatment monitoring aspect of it? The current gold standard for lung cancer staging is what we call the TNM staging system. T for tumor, N for uh, uh, lymph nodes, and M for metastasis. Now, depending on the progress of the cancer, uh, we start with the tumor staging. T0 is presence of no tumor. A T1 staging is where the tumor is less than three centimeter uh, in size. A T2 tumor is when the tumor is less than five centimeter in size. A T3, when the tumor is less than 7 centimeter in size. And, and T4, which is a very advanced stage, is where the tumor is more than 7 centimeter and is not only affecting the lung, but can also affect the lung, uh, the heart and other surrounding organs of the body. When you're looking at uh, the end part of the scoring, you're actually trying to assess the involvement of lymph nodes. In the lymph nodes, if it is N0 means the lymph nodes are not affected. Mm -hmm. N1, N2, and N3 would determine the extent of uh, lymph nodes and the number of lymph nodes which are getting affected uh, due to this lung cancer. And the final and one of the most advanced stages of cancer is when it has metastasized. And uh, to grade metastasis, you would normally grade them between M0 uh, and you have M1A, M1B, and M1C. In M1A, it has uh, spread to the surrounding areas of the lung. Mm -hmm. In M1B, it would have had a distant uh, metastasis, but limited to probably one organ. And when multiple tissues or organs are involved, uh, then you are going to classify that as an M1C uh, uh, staging. Now, the best way of doing the staging is to uh, do an FDG PET CT. And uh, with an FDG PET CT, we can have a very precise and a clear staging of the progress of cancer. Great. Uh, so, yes, sir, TNM staging is the gold standard, and every uh, practitioner should be aware of this so that when a patient approaches them, so early after a PET CT, they are at least able to identify the staging and refer them to uh, uh, any further specialist if required. So uh, coming to the significance of these imaging modalities, sir, how are they helpful in identifying the lung cancer metastasis as well as its recurrence? So uh, to identify metastasis, I think the current gold standard is to do an FDG uh, PET CT. Mm -hmm. And uh, the FDG PET CT, if done at uh, certain intervals, uh, it is not only going to help to see the progression of the cancer, but in cases where uh, cancer treatment methodology is being used, it's mm -hmm. also able to see the effect uh, of the treatment and whether the cancer is regressing 
and and then finally that's the most important diagnostic tool uh, which is which is being used by oncologists all across the world for cancer management yes so uh, i guess pet ct is the gold standard for diagnosis uh, coming com dividing them into stages and then going ahead with the treatment planning so uh, again coming to the last part of our section today how does these x-rays or if i talk about these imaging modalities they guide the minimally invasive procedures for lung cancer management sir so one of the first uh, treatment modalities for lung cancer is to have uh, a surgical remover of the tumor mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. now uh, to have a surgical remover of the tumor uh, without the least amount of uh, discomfort to the patient, uh, image-guided surgical removal can be done. And mm -hmm. this can be uh, either done using video-assisted thoracic surgery, or it can be done using a uh, image-guided video thoracic surgery. And uh, these are the uh, predominantly used uh, methodologies to have uh, a minimally invasive surgery being done. Uh, in cases where uh, performance of a surgery uh, cannot be done due to complications associated uh, with, with the disease or the presence of other comorbid conditions. Mm -hmm. Then other uh, uh, methodologies that are currently being opted are percutaneous image-guided ablation of the tumor. And uh, this ablation can be done using radio frequency or cryoablation. And I think this is where the current uh, treatment uh, uh, methodologies are progressing. Great, sir. So uh, surgical, as you mentioned, surgical aspect is one of the uh, aspects of management. So if I talk about my personal experience, my father was also a lung cancer patient. So we got to know about his staging in, in the very end. So there was no symptoms that he had uh, as we could early, early de detect it so that we could approach and get the treatment, necessary treatment started. So at that stage coming at the later stages, surgery is something which is not indicated. So how do one uh, how if your message could be how would you guide such patients or what should be the uh, the patient that should uh, one should do to actually treat such patients okay since you uh, you know use the word guide i think the first step is to quit smoking but uh, in the event a patient is uh, at a high risk of developing lung cancer then a periodical screening uh, is the uh, first step. Uh, the screening can start with a, a simple chest X-ray or maybe a, a low-dose CT scan performed at uh, a specified interval. Mm -hmm. In the event uh, when the disease has progressed and uh, uh, a simple management using surgery cannot be done, I think a chemotherapy uh, or an immunotherapy is the only option that is left over. And... Uh, Chemotherapy in conjunction with ablation is uh, probably what uh, a surgeon would choose and what an oncologist would choose for the treatment of uh, uh, patients with a very advanced stage of lung cancer. Great. Sure. Uh, thank you so much, sir. Thank you for all your valuable insights. It was really having uh, lovely having an interactive session with you today on World Lung Cancer Day. Thank you so much. Thank you uh, for inviting me into this show. And I hope that whatever we discuss today uh, goes on to benefit uh, not only the patients, but uh, also the medical plan uh, who are treating lung cancer. Thank you so much. Never miss a medical update from Medical Dialogues. Like, subscribe, and press the bell icon.